Hello and welcome. My name is Patrice, I'm mixing engineer at Le Manoir and today we will be looking to a brand new version of a well-known software which is Sound ID Reference. I've been using it for many years and I've been quite pleased with it but at the time it was only a stereo version and Sound ID has now just released a multi-channel version that can be used for Dolby Atmos. So well let's have a look. And once you've downloaded the package from the Sound ID reference website, there's a free trial of 21 days, which is great. Um, you have this application we are seeing now, which is the Sound ID reference measure application. And the first thing you have to do, of course, is to calibrate your room. And once the application is started, the first thing you have to do is to select your speaker configuration. You can see it goes up to 9.1.6, which is is great and in my case I'm interested in 7.1.4 so we have the three uh, front speakers the LFE the four height speakers and of course side and rear speakers uh, then a few checks the phantom power of plus 48 volts is I have here uh, this uh, microphone, which the one I got when I got the stereo version of Sonarworks a few years ago. This is the test microphone. Uh, so yes, it is uh, phantom powered. I do have a microphone stand, which is right beside me. Uh, my input and output is routed to the same device or uses the same clock source. Uh, basically, yes, um, that's my audio interface. Microphone signal cannot be heard through the speakers, that's correct. And bass management is turned on if present. Uh, let's skip. Um, and so we'll have to select the microphone input channel, uh, which in my case happens to be... Woo, woo, woo. Uh, that's my interface one. And yes, you can access the microphone. Tap gently, input signal detected. Way, yes, it's working. Uh, great. Sound ID reference microphone, of course, your mileage will vary here, and mine is uh, 34B261. Uh, okay, next. So I guess that it will be now downloading my this microphone calibration profile, which is here. Okay, so and my LFE channel gain basically it has at the moment the same loudness as the other channels. Uh, okay, and now front, left, right is one and two. Yeah. Yes, yes, uh, the center speaker, yes, that's correct, also, LFE, yeah, Boom. Uh, surround speakers, left, yes, that's beautiful, um, rear surround, left, yes, um, top front, yes, uh, and yes also so everybody's here and the following steps are designed to let the software know where your sweet spot is located so let's check this what can we do reduce your output gain for safety before playing tone mm, sure well it's dimmed anyway please adjust the volume of your output device my voice should sound at normal conversation volume Left speaker. Right speaker. Good. Okay. And now, clear out anything you can bump into within your listening area. Put the microphone on mix stand and point it upwards. So, well, let's do just that.
that we have measured our room and saved our calibration profile, it's time to have a listen to what it does. And unfortunately, in a setup such as mine, it's quite of a problem because what I'm using is, you know, I'm using a Reaper as a DAW and so via the Dolby uh, audio bridge, it's going straight into the Dolby Atmos production suite and then straight to my interface. And inside my interface, I have a digital loop with my Trinov MC Pro for room correction. And in such a setup, it's not unfortunately possible. There's no way to insert the uh, sound ID reference mechanism for the moment, because they have what they used to call the sound ID system wide, which is just sound ID reference application. But for the moment, it's only working in stereo. The multi-channel version is on its way. That will be for later in 2022. But at the time when I'm doing this video, it has not been released yet. So I can't try it. I only have access to stereo. Uh, so in order to try and listen to a Dolby Atmos mix, the only solution that I had to compare it with my Trinov uh, was to export a 7.1.4 file from the Al Dolby Atmos production suite and I did that with a couple of mixes that I made and then imported those 7.1.4 WAV files into Reaper and put the Sound Idea Reference plugin on the master bus. The first thing that you have to make sure when you're using this plugin is to check your what they call the curve assignment to make sure that uh, each channel is mapped to the correct output. So we have sound, this was fine from the start. Another thing that you may want to check is the target and I've selected the flat target which means that the, the plugin will try to uh, simulate what would be a perfectly flat response from my speakers. I've used this setting because that's what I was used to uh, do with when I was working with the stereo only version of uh, Sonarworks. But they also have now this Dolby Atmos music matched curve, uh, which corresponds to Dolby Atmos specifications. Uh, and well, honestly, I didn't find it that much of a difference. It's There's a slight boost in the low end and the slight attenuation in the high end it does not make that of a difference and what I haven't tried to um, delve into is the custom target which allows you to um, limit uh, the spectrum of the correction if you want to and to change the curve uh, as much as you want. Uh, basically, you can try and play with it in order to better customize the response curve to your taste. But I basically used a flat target because I'm very confident with Sound ID products. I've been using it for years. Another solution is, and you can't do that from the plugin itself, but you can do it from the application, is if you uh, click on those three little dots here, you can export all the values of the EQ and delays that have been calculated by the measurement process uh, to um, a whole bunch of interfaces like the AVID or DAD uh, ones um, with SPQ, which is the DSP card inside that handles all the EQ and delays. You can also export it uh, to the Dolby Atmos mastering suite, not the production suite, which is the um, the cheapest one, and the mastering suite, which is designed to work in, in a network um, and has also EQ capabilities that the production suite doesn't have. The production suite only has delays settings for your speakers, but not EQ. Uh, also, you, can, you could use, if you are like me, if you are a merging converter person, uh, you could use an Anubis because even though the Anubis itself doesn't have enough outputs to feed all of your speakers, anyway, it can handle uh, the delays and EQ uh, for the whole network of interfaces. And then you can use another Ravenna or maybe possibly Dante interface 
and all the calculation would be done in the Anubis and also for those Jones and Scanlon or Jones Scanlon I don't know um, that the first time in my life that I'm hearing about that uh, studio monitors that most likely also uh, have an inbuilt EQ system and my guess is that in the future uh, we will see more of these export capabilities maybe for the Channel X system uh, that remains to be seen. The Sound ID reference plugin is sold at 499 plugins. Uh, I think that's about $100 more uh, if you need the microphone, the test microphone. And if you're upgrading, like I would be doing uh, from the stereo version, it's $299. Okay. Th this is very far uh, from what a train of multi channel system costs. So that's why I'm, I feel. Uh, it's a bit unfair uh, to compare them. Uh, what I found is that, but that's really personal taste. Do your own research as usual, of course. But from my taste, I found that the Trinov is still doing a um, better job, especially to everything that is related to the time domain. Uh, because as you know, calibrating a room, of course, is a matter of EQ, so that your speakers, they all sound kind of the same. Uh, at the listening position, but most of the problems that we face in the control room actually come from the time domain, which means the difference, the time difference between the, f the frequencies uh, when they reach your ear because of the reflections of, on the walls, on the ceilings, the floor, uh, the furniture, especially when it's a small room, uh, and all of that makes it so that there, there are phase issues between frequencies at the listening position. Uh, and most of the problems actually lie there in the, the, the time domain. And so that's why I found that the train of um, indisputably does a better job uh, at that. But then again, the comparison is, is, is not fair. But I'm really happy that Sound ID finally released that because I've been one of the first that the, the thread is still on the support website for multi-channel 5.1 setup and Sonarworks have been in the past they've been very transparent uh, with the fact that uh, they say that they were focusing on on the headphones correction system because that was more f for general public so that meant more money for the company and so they could finally develop a multi-channel system going up to 9.1.6 compatible with many interfaces and this is really great especially if you want to start with the, the lowest budget possible for starting in Dolby Atmos of course you will need to buy speakers and we know that that's expensive uh, you will need an interface with at least 12 outputs uh, for a 7.1.4 system uh, and uh, there you have a really great calibration system uh, and especially if you're using logic because I'm stuck here um, because I'm using Reaper uh, but in logic of course as logic now has inbuilt uh, Dolby Atmos capabilities uh, of course you, you can use it straight in logic and so if you're using logic and if you want to dive into immersive audio with a, a not too expensive speaker setup uh, this will probably greatly help you so I really encourage you to, to test it uh, because I know that over the years they really know their stuff uh, and uh, I was pleased to um, review that and I was really eager to and to try it. Well, that's it for today. Thanks a lot for watching and see you soon. Bye.